Welcome to Extra Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Extra Channel, where we review extra things, like a Defender that is... 300-ish millimeters longer than a normal Defender. Bit yeah. longer. What's it called? What? The Defender 130. 130. So we've done the 90, that's the yep. two-door. We've done the 110, yep. which is the four-door. And this is the other four-door, <laughs> the 130, but... <laughs> With more stretch. Eight seats. I mean... And listen, about the seats, they're actually quite good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can fit all easily. I can easily fit in the back, the back back. The back back. Like third, the back of the back. Third row. The third row. And the middle partition. That's a really good word. I don't know if that's the right word, but it feels right. That folds down, and then the one in the middle row folds down. So you can easily fit two, four, six people and all of their skis. Oh, nice. Okay. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, I, I, I remember it. seeing a picture on the site of a very comfortable climber with all his. Uh, yes. With his belays. I would also like to point out that he had like four different belay devices. Belay. You don't need though that many. No. You need one and you can repel and belay. But he's carrying it. it for his friends because that's how many people you can fit in this car. <laughs> uh, but it's interesting though because the Defender has never been an eight-seater. And so now it's like because it, I, I think a part of this is they've realized it's become a bit of a bougie mall crawler. Yes. So what do you mean they've realized? From the ground up, they yes. built it to be that. Well, it is now in competition with Escalade yes. and Yukons and X7s. And, and the Jeep. Range, even the Range Rover now, which is a seven-seater, I guess. The long. Yes, yeah. And the Wagoneer, yeah. Yep. Yeah, and the Grand Wagoneer. You know what? It's, uh, it's still an incredibly desirable car. Well, when I say still, I mean, when it first came out, I was of the camp of this is plastic up here and this isn't a real Defender and it's not rugged enough, but now, I really want one. You Not this called, one. You just called it a mall crawler, though. Uh, yeah, but I still. This is the first I'll edition. Put into a trap. We've got I it in now. Sedona red. It's very Beautiful. California. Why is it? Yeah, it was like the red rocks of Sedona, isn't it? I think they're in Arizona. That's not in California. Arizona. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm from Canada. Um, proud British car. You know? <laughs> Sedona red. Yeah. Uh, listen, it still looks like a Defender, but longer. How much does it cost? Uh, this one is about 100 grand Canadian. Okay, so it's not a cheap. This outing. is the first edition. First edition, okay. Yeah. So it's not a cheap outing. No. But it's rugged. Yeah. And now fits a bunch of people. Should we go drive it? Yeah. Can I drive? Yeah. Okay. Okay, before we go, uh, thanks to Jaguar Land Rover Metro West. Yes. For loaning us this. Yes, this, yeah. and, so they, they gave us the Range Rover Sport, the video yep. you may have already seen on Extra Throttle House, and the full-size Range Rover. Yep. So they are, they're coming through. Bunch of legends. Okay. I got vibes. You got vibes? I got vibes from this car. All right? Yeah, like uh, vibrations? Right. Well, there's that over the bumps, for sure. Yeah. But there's just something about these. Is it the Torx bolts everywhere? <laughs> Making you feel rugged? So rugged, yeah. oh man. I just want to use tools and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I now know what Torx means. You know what Torx means. No, this is, uh, this is there's just an, a, a feeling to this that feels very upright, off-roady, Fun, right? It's got, it's got, it's got a feeling to it. The other Range Rovers, the uh, the the Sport and the regular Range Rover, very much feel like luxury SUVs. They're plush. Yeah, these these, is, these, these seats don't compare. No, they don't. They no. don't. They're definitely well. They're still comfortable. They're just though. fine. Yeah, but like, th there's just something about this that feels very much more utilitarian. However, it's not so utilitarian that the car is not comfortable. Because no, it is. It's still comfortable. Yeah. This has that P400 powertrain, so it's, it's you know, that... Sounds home. better in this than it sounds in the uh, Sport. Yeah, it's not as piped in. Yeah, as exactly, the yes. Yeah. It's, a, it's more honest in this. Yeah. Sport transmission mode. Shifted exactly the same. Yeah, I felt that. Yeah. Okay, so... It's long. It is very... It goes way back way now. Way back way back. I, I can't believe how usable those rear seats are. I mean, it certainly helps that we're basically rolling around in a gigantic cube, right? Like, there's so much vertical headroom all the way back, right? It doesn't slope at all. <laughs> no, but it's still, it's not crazy wide, so it's still okay for off-roading. Yep. It actually feels noticeably narrower than a Range Rover on this road. I don't know if it actually is. It could just be that it feels more vertical, so it feels narrower. Yeah, it do feel high up. Yes. Now, this is really nice. I, again, there's nothing... This is why I like the Defender so much, is that it has all the same, okay, I can use it again, vibes, as the G-Wagon, yeah. as a Bronco, as a Jeep. It's pretty based. But, I don't know what that means either. No, don't worry. Um, but it, it has all of that feeling, but none of the harshness and the unrefinement. No, in, it's not, it's not punishing. Unrefinement? 
unrefinement. Yeah, it's not punishing. No, it's not. It's just nice. And there's still luxury. So we have the sunroof going back to their seats, and then the people in the very back now have their own sunroof. And their own heated seats. Yes, in a, in a third row. Yep. Yeah. Pretty impressive. How much does this thing cost again? I think as options like 110, 115 Canadian. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it starts at it starts at about 100. I think for the for the 130, yeah, yeah. right? If I was going to buy one of these and I didn't need the space, I'd still get a 90. Yeah. But like, it's cool that if you want the Defender thing, you can now get it to hold a whole bunch of people, which is very cool. But but when do you use that? When do when do you use what? Like when do you when are you going off roading with a whole bunch of people? I don't know. Maybe you guys are going on a group adventure somewhere. Group adventure. I feel like the only people that would actually take a group of friends, get in one of these, and like drive it up a mountain to do like some backcountry skiing are people in commercials. For this car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the only people I, in the I world. I think there are parts of the world where this makes a lot of sense. But yeah. I think what they've done here is they've created a desirable package. It looks sharp. So everyone doesn't even lean that much in the corners, honestly. No, everyone still just wants to buy it, which means everyone's going to buy it regardless of whether they're off road. Yes. Yet. This might be as off-roaded as much as a, a Range Rover Sport. Uh, yeah. Or a Range Rover Sport. You're Range probably Rover, right, yeah. Which is not much. But, I don't know. But it can do it. I just like it. Yeah, this, this has got some actual off-road chops. Just, right. uh, and the, if, if, if the Torx bolts... The Torx bolts, are yes. Anything to go, I mean, we've got to bring it back to the Torx bolts. We've got to bring it back. They're such an aggressive feature, and especially on this wood here. Yeah, I know. That's that's how what you're okay. I think what your issue is with these Torx bolts and why you keep bringing them up is because yeah. it's artificially rugged. Yes, they, artificial. They don't need to be. There. Yeah, you're being played to right now. You're being yes. marketed, and you said it's fun and great, and it's, absolutely, it's yeah, working yeah. on you. It was working real, real but nice. The, but the gauge hustle looks great. The infotainment's <laughs> yep. great. I, I don't know. I just like these. I would totally live with one. If the ninety was a little bit cheaper, I would daily one. Well, I just, and you, so what engine would you get? I haven't driven the smallest engine, so I don't know. But like, I like this P400 engine a lot. So like, yeah. I think it's all you need, honestly. I, yeah. There is a V8 Defender, which Did we have. We haven't driven. Have we driven it? No. No, we, we haven't, haven't driven it. No. Do you feel like the extra length of the 130 is hurting your ability to drive this car? Not at all. Does it, it doesn't feel like a bus. No. Honestly, I can't even tell the difference between this and a 90 going around a corner like that. It doesn't feel any different. So, so okay. So take all the off-road aside. Yeah. We just drove a GMC Yukon to Pittsburgh and back. We've driven right. Escalades. We we've, dri we've driven X7s. Yep. Where does it kind of? Uh, this wins on cool factor over all of those. That's just subjective, I, though. Yes, I know. That's what I'm saying. I said it's an unquantifiable want. Listen, I think it drives as good as those to the point where it makes no difference that I would pick this because it's cooler. Right. Did that make any sense? No. Okay. No, it does. It okay. Does. It's just, they're all kind of good enough. They're all good enough. But if it, you, yeah, for luxury, you're still going to want the Wagoneers and the Escalades and the Rangers. Yeah, if you want full, full luxury. But this is still, this still feels like a luxurious car. What about like livability and, and does this have any rear wheel steer or anything? I don't think it does. So we're going to do a little loop-de-loo. Yeah. That's actually still very good. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> That's pretty good. I don't know. I really like Defenders. Yeah. I really like those now. You know how you know someone has a Defender? No. They, they tell you? No, they keep talking about it. 